Invest smart with Bull Smart. Welcome back to our fifth lesson on the exciting world of investments. Today, we'll take a closer look at mutual funds and explore how to interpret their historical data and to understand performance and risk. Let's get started. Historical data can tell us how a fund has performed in the past. We can glean a lot of useful information from this data to help us make informed investment decisions. However, not all historical data is equally important. Here are some commonly used metrics. The returns represent the percentage increase or decrease in the net asset value of a mutual fund over a specific time period. Historical returns can reflect the profitability of a mutual fund and can be compared to similar funds or benchmark indices to evaluate the relative merits of a mutual fund. There are several types of historical returns. Number 1. The Cumulative Returns It represents the percentage change in the net asset value of a mutual fund from a specific starting date to the present. For example, if a stock fund's net asset value per unit was $10 on January 1, 2022 and rose to $12 by January 1, 2023, its cumulative return for 2022 would be 20%. Number two is the annualized returns. It converts the cumulative returns to an average annual percentage growth or decrease. And yes, it is something we are familiar with. CAGR, for example, if a bond fund's net asset value per unit was $10 on January 1, 2020 and increased to $13 by January 1, 2023, its three years cumulative return would be 30% and its annualized return would be 9.14%. Volatility refers to the magnitude and frequency of changes in the net asset value of a mutual fund over a specific period. Volatility can reflect the risk level of a mutual fund and can be compared to similar funds or benchmark indices to evaluate the risk-reward ratio of a mutual fund. Historical volatility can be measured using the following indicators. Number 1. The Standard Deviation It represents the degree of deviation of a mutual fund's net asset value per unit from its average value over a certain period. The higher the standard deviation, the more violent the changes in the net asset value per unit and the higher the risk. The lower the standard deviation, the more stable the changes in the net asset value per unit and lower the risk. Number 2. The Maximum Drawdown it represents the decline in the net asset value per unit of a mutual fund from its highest point to its lowest point over a certain period. The larger the maximum drawdown, the more severe the losses experienced by the fund and the higher the risk. At the same time, a higher maximum drawdown indicates that the fund manager's ability to manage the fund is relatively poor. For returns and volatility, they have limitations and require caution. They are not guarantee of future performance, therefore, we should not solely rely on historical returns and volatility when choosing a fund. They need to be compared to similar funds or benchmark indices to see if the fund has outperformed the market average or expected targets. Sometimes, numbers and words may not be enough to provide a clear and vivid understanding of mutual funds. We can use charts and case studies to better understand the historical data of mutual funds. Let's take a look at an example of a line chart that shows the changes in the net asset value per unit of four different types of mutual funds from July 1st, 2022 to July 1st, 2023. We can see the following information from the chart. First, stock fund A's net value per unit rose from $10 to $15 over the year with a cumulative return of 50%, the best performance. However, it also experienced significant volatility within a maximum drawdown of 20%, the highest risk. Second, the bond fund B's net asset value per unit increased from $10 to $11 over the year with a cumulative return of 10%, a weaker performance. However, its volatility was small with a maximum drawdown of only 5% representing the lower risk. The mutual fund C's net asset value per unit increased from $10 to $12 over the year with a cumulative return of 20% moderate performance. Its volatility was also moderate with a maximum drawdown of 10% representing a balanced risk-reward ratio. Fourth, Money Market Fund D's net asset value per unit increased from $10 to $10.5 over the year with a cumulative return of 5% the weakest performance. However, its volatility was minimal, with no drawdown representing the lower risk. Alright, that's all for this video. Do you get how to interpret historical data as well as how to use charts? See you in the next video.